Our universe is made up of fundamental rules. They allow for structure, order the human mind can follow. They are precise. The universe, because of these rules, as far as we know, is trustworthy. Well, maybe not. This is Werner Heisenberg, and he proved we can't know everything. That the universe may not be full of unlimited discovery. But let's backtrack. This is an electron, and this is a photon. The electron is what orbits every atom we know, and photons are particles of light. However, while diagrams may make these seem like ordinary particles, electrons and photons are incredibly different from, say, a proton or a neutron. This is because both of these particles are waves and particles. How could this be true? One thing can't be two at once, right? In 1801, a man named Thomas Young conducted one of the most famous experiments known to physics, known as the double slit experiment. It went like this. Particles were shot through two slits onto a surface on the other side, creating two lines of feedback from the particles. When photons and electrons were shot through these slits, however, five columns ended up on the surface as feedback on the other side. How is this possible? The only explanation was that photons and electrons were waves, but they are also particles, right? Well, yeah, they're both. This is known as wave-particle duality. Photons and electrons are both a particle and a wave. Okay, that's interesting. But why does this discovery lead to so much uncertainty? <laughs> see, see what I did there? Uncert- Okay. Enter quantum physics. I think one of the most misunderstood realms of physics is quantum physics. It just sounds so complicated. In reality, quantum physics just studies how matter and energy behave on the atomic and subatomic level. If you are studying things like protons, neutrons, quarks, and electrons, to name a few, you'd be studying quantum physics. Well, or chemistry. But for the sake of this video, let's stick to the electron. So this is an electron, but so is this, because remember, electrons are particles and waves. So. I want to study this electron, and as any good experiment starts, I want to collect data. W wait, where did it go? There it is! But I want to get closer to get a better look. This means I need to find its position. Wait, it moved again! Okay, how about we start with its speed so we can at least keep up? How do we find it? Well, electrons are waves, meaning we can calculate how fast it's moving by multiplying its wavelength by its frequency. Sick, we have its speed, now we can keep up. But where exactly is it? I mean, electrons are particles too, so shouldn't we be able to calculate where it is? But how the heck do I do that with an infinite line? The electron could be anywhere. Okay, what if we shift the line over just a little bit? Technically, the electron could still be here too, since this wavelength is evenly spaced and infinite. Most of the peaks don't line up, but wait, see how these do? Ooh, and these valleys also line up. So let's make this into a new line funky looking, but notice the spot with a lot of peaks and valleys? Using this, we can tell the electron we're looking for is more likely to be here than the quote normal parts, because as you can see, the frequency is higher. But wait, how are we supposed to find the momentum now? Our line is so uneven, we don't know what amplitude or frequency to start with because they're all different. Any of them could be the right one, but if we even it out again, we have no idea where the electron could be. This is what Werner Heisenberg discovered to many physicists and mathematicians' dismay. The closer we get to one answer, the further we get from another. Maybe we'll never know how to reconcile this problem. After all, quantum physics is complicated. But it's puzzles like these that make physics so fascinating. It's puzzles like these that keep many, including myself, hooked on seemingly impossible problems.